Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Perky Pet Podcast Series. Today's show is the final of our three-part series on hummingbirds. Special thanks to Perky Pet for bringing the series to you. To learn more about Perky Pet, please visit their website at perkypet.com. I'm Susan Matson, and on behalf of Perky Pet, I'd like to introduce Dr. Ross Hawkins to our show. Ross is the founder and director of the Hummingbird Society, which was created to educate people about hummingbirds and protect these birds from extinction. During today's conversation, Ross will highlight the territorial nature of hummingbirds, their appetite, and how an intense need for food gets in the way of their notion of sharing. Ross, welcome to the show. Thank you, Susan. I think just about everyone has observed that hummingbirds are territorial. It's helpful to understand why this is so. Most people probably don't know that the hummingbird must eat every 20 to 30 minutes during waking hours or it runs the risk of starvation. It's either eat frequently or die. It's that simple. The quantities, though, will shock you. A hummingbird needs to eat double its weight every day in nectar. Now, that's enormous by human standards. If we convert that to human terms, a 150-pound adult would have to eat 250 Big Macs or 2,900 Oreo cookies if he ate like a hummingbird. The hummingbird knows exactly how much he needs, and he will protect a patch of flowers large enough to support him, rarely more, or a feeder, which is just as valuable. Ross, is there any time of day where a hummingbird is more hungry? Oh, especially in the morning. They've gone all night without eating. Flowers, meanwhile, produce nectar mostly at night, so that early in the morning, the hummingbird is at its hungriest. The flower is thus best able to supply a sumptuous breakfast. The blossoms then have to recharge, and the hummer waits patiently while this occurs. Then he revisits. I should say that he also eats a lot just before bedtime, because he knows he has to make it through the night without the ability to eat. And this absolute need for frequent feeding means he must protect his food source. So we have to forgive him if he doesn't understand the word share. After all, he's never seen a flower like a feeder. Even an 8-ounce feeder can feed 40 average-sized hummingbirds for a day, but he doesn't know that. Wow. I suspect that one backyard could easily turn into a wolf <laughs> with hummingbirds. Is there anything that we can do uh, to keep that from happening? Well, I don't know that you can keep it from happening, but you can certainly <laughs> reduce the interactions. When the hummingbird defends his food sources against all comers, we can counter it. It's better to have two 8-ounce feeders than one 16-ounce feeder. The feeders can be separated, maybe on opposite sides of the house, maybe tucked into an open tree, on a shrub, and so forth. At our home in Arizona, we currently have seven feeders out. And we put out 10 to 12 when the hummingbird population is higher in the summer. Ross, if the hummingbird population does get large, does territorial just become more intense? Do they tame out? How does that work? Well, it's interesting. Uh, one bird can territorialize the feeder against all comers. It's been shown again and again. But the hummingbird is really smart. If there are so many hummingbirds that he realizes he has to chase away 20 others, he realizes it's a waste of energy. And that's why with large populations of hummingbirds, you actually reverse the strategy I just described. Instead of separating the feeders widely, you place all the feeders close together. And the hummingbird just gives up. Too much energy, huh? <laughs> Too much of an energy cost for the energy benefit. They almost seem to have a mental calculator knowing whether it's worth the effort to do certain things. Wow. So how many could someone actually have in their yard? I think the record goes to Jess Hendricks, who lives down in Nogales. The last time I was at Jesse's house, he had out 126 feeders. And at the peak, he was feeding eight to 9,000 hummingbirds a day. And there was almost no territoriality to be seen. Everybody seemed to be waiting their turn because there wasn't any use in chasing away one of the birds because there's another 8,999 ready to take its place. My goodness, that had to have been a sight to see. 
it was. Jesse tells me he uses about a thousand pounds of sugar every year. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Well, you so, see, we really have to forgive the hummingbirds if their mother didn't teach them table manners, but she certainly did teach them the importance of not starving. Absolutely. Ross, thank you so much for an interesting leap into the hummingbird psyche. I'm not quite sure I'm going to be able to look at another package of Oreo cookies quite the same way. For more information about the the hummingbird or to learn about Perky Pets products you heard today, please visit www.perkypets.com. And to learn more about Ross and his work over at the Hummingbird Society, please visit www.hummingbirdsociety.com. Thanks for listening to our three-part series on hummingbirds with Dr. Ross Hawkins. We hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new worth sharing. Thanks and have a great day.